Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this beautiful look was created using this a beautiful yet somewhat controversial palette. So, this palette is bigger than my head. Seriously, it is bigger than my head. Oh lord. Okay, so, if you want to see which shades I used to create this look and how well or not, they performed, and then my friend, you, you've got the best seat in the house. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. It's here! I will have shown you the box in the intro. I know everybody has done this, but look at that presentation. This is just... I just want to stroke it. Um, I like the idea of this bumper thing that's, that's in here to keep this from shaking around too much during postage. Um, you can throw that away. I'm actually going to keep hold of it so that it keeps it nice and safe in there. Just in case, God forbid, but just in case it gets dropped or knocked or whatever has just that little bit of buffer. I mean, this is ridiculously huge. Um, to be quite honest, I almost wish he would either stick with the blood sugar blue blood sized or almost go back to the thirsty type because I would rather pay a little bit less and have something that is easier to store because when you've got all of his palettes which I have they're not the easiest of things to store I mean Alien is my absolute favourite of all of his palettes I can't believe he's oh, can't believe that he's um, <clears throat> discontinuing that look at that this is actually pretty much the colour of my wedding dress um, so uh, yeah Except my dress wasn't velvet, but colour wise, that purple you see as the light hits it, that's, that's pretty much what my wedding dress looked like. So, this has a very soft spot in my heart. Huge mirror. <sighs> Won't fold back. This is the other thing with cardboard packaging, you can fold it back. I have a ridiculously small area here on the kitchen table because I've got all my setup around me. Um, this is not the easiest of things to work with. Uh, I do like this big thick... I mean if, if you know what most plastic... I call these condoms... Uh, what, what most plastic protectors are like. They're very very thin um, and kind of this is, ooh, this would work well as a fan if I start getting too hot. Oh, that's useful. That's lovely. Right, let's tuck that back there. So It's just bloody huge. Um, I probably will keep hold of it, mainly because of this shade here that's got glitter in it. And these two new wet look shades. Um, just to try and stop it from getting on the mirror too much, really. 
So, we all know what these look like. While I talk you through the next bit, I am going to put some swatches up here that I did. Everybody does swatches. Swatches are not an indication of how the palette will perform. Just gives me an idea of what sort of colour they're going to look like on my skin tone. That's why I do them. Um, this is still a teaching channel, so the fact that I want complete beginners to be able to keep up with me and my chronic pain means that I probably go a lot slower than most people. YouTube has a speed widget up here somewhere. Please feel free to use it rather than moan at me that I am taking too long. Because even though I say this at the start of every film and it's in my description, I still get the odd comment here and there from people going, you take too long, you should speed it up. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to insert the clip here where I talk about the difference between hooded and deep set eyes because they have very similar issues but the workarounds for each eye shape is very very different and if you've got deep set eyes and are following the hooded eye tutorial and wondering why your eye look is not coming out the way you want it to this could explain why. Now. When I insert this clip, I am going to be very, very up close and personal. So I don't want you to freak out. Okay? Once I come back from that clip, I will then be very up close and personal and will be applying some of these to these. Yes, I'm still nailed down. I still haven't managed to get in and see my nail girl yet. So, here's the eye description. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles. That I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So. I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye, D 
deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I'm back. Right. Now, I'm going to be using three different brushes, different prices for each one. <laughs> Basically, I'm using a medium-sized blender this is the tapered blending bl brush from Boozy Shop. Then I'm going to be using a smaller blender, so small and medium. This is one of the ones from the um, set from AliExpress. This one they call Contour Brush Number no. Nine. And then I'm going to be using the Morphe Jeffree Star JS24, which is a lipstick brush. It's clean, it's just stained. Right, so I'm going to start off with the medium boozy shop brush and I am going to pick a colour. Quirky blimey. I think I'm going to go into Vivid Mood to start with. As usual there's quite a bit of kick up in the pan but I just tap it back off into the pan because at least it means you're getting pigment up on the brush. Now again this is called an artistry palette so there are going to be shades in here uh, because it's a vegan palette to make red they can't use cochineal or carmine which is what they always used to use um, and the dyes that they use can stain your skin. Really not an issue for me. I just, if I'm not wearing makeup the next day, I'll just put a bit of eyeshadow base on. Not this one, I'll, I'll use concealer or something just to, to mute the shading down. <clears throat> if you do have sensitive skin, it may be worth testing the ones which are marked as pressed pigments on the box. Um, just swatch them in your inner arm, leave it for 12 hours and see if you get a reaction. As always, I'm holding the brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on as possible. And I'm going to start about here with some circles. Now I've tapped a lot off to try and minimise fallout. Because I'd rather do that and build a colour up. So I'm doing little circular movements in this direction, going towards the nose. And then when I get here, a little bit of a bounce, and then reverse the direction coming back. Now the reason I do that is because I'm 45, I'll be 46 in good grief, two and a half months time and uh, 
I've lost 14 stone, which is about 200 pounds. Um, so the skin on my eyelids moves and by doing this I'm very gently moving the skin around and it just helps prevent the tiger striping or the barcoding. Now with this eye I've got super deep creasing just here which um, unfortunately doesn't, this, this circular movement doesn't work on it. Um, so I'll show you what I have to do with that eye when we get there. So I'm just building this shade up. Purples are some of the most difficult shades to create. And although there aren't very many deep purples in here, there's really only two, Dungeon and Blood Queen, you do have varying shades of. You've got one, two, three, four, five six that I would call true lilac or lavenders and then a couple of pinky purples as well so it's weird this vivid mood looks like a lavender I don't know if it will show this is one that I'm using but you can see it's it's blending out much more pinky red than the shade it is in the actual palette. So this might change the direction that I'm going with a the look. Then again it might not. Right, I'm going to do the same thing now with this eye. So this is the first time that I got frustrated with Beautylish because um, Hubby was buying me this palette as my Valentine's present and I was buying little mini lipsticks and a couple of the glosses. Um, so I ordered the palette first on Hubby's card and then literally two minutes later because that's how long it took me, I was that quick. I had all the pages open and ready. I just like add to cart, add to cart, export cart, you know. Um, there was literally two minutes difference because I took a screenshot of the order confirmations. So I know there was two minutes difference between them. Um, it took them normally beautyish, even with the the really big Jeffrey launches. Not conspiracy, obviously that was that was just ridiculous. Um, but with previous Jeffrey launches, normally the the palette or whatever I'd ordered would go out within two days. Um, and they did say that their turnaround was six or seven working days, but they've always said that. But it's always come out in like two to three days and been with me usually within sort of a week to seven days. Yeah. Ordered this on the 21st and it arrived yesterday, which was the 6th. Cannot tell you how frustrated I was getting. And what makes it worse is that the order that I made two minutes later and emailed them about saying, if you like, you can package them into the same box because they're coming to the same house. Um, was dispatched yesterday. It's only just gone out and I had to chase it with them three times. Uh, and it's the first time I've had an issue with Beautylish. But to be fair, their customer service was very good. I just keep sitting back and checking that I've got the same shape both sides because obviously I'm not James Charles I don't photoshop my results right I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean micropore cloth because I don't like using um, <clears throat> colour switches anymore 
and far too harsh on your bristles, especially if you've got natural bristles. Right, I'm going to go into Deviant, which so many Americans don't seem to know how to pronounce. They keep saying Deviant, and it's like, no, it's, it's, it's not the drag queen, it's, it's Deviant. So this again looked like a lighter version of Vivid Mode. Let's see how pink this one turns out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this along this top edge just to buff the shade out. Oh good, this is staying more true to the colour I was wanting. That's excellent. If you've got um, smaller lids than myself then just use smaller brushes I think I did say that in the in the eye shape description so I'm just buffing this really softening that top edge I'm just going to wipe the brush off dip back into vivid mode and just Reinforce some of that deeper shade just there. Given that purples are so difficult to create, this is actually blending really nicely. Certainly blending better than his previous purples have done, put it that way. Having to spend a lot less effort in terms of the length of time I'm having to blend. These are actually really blending quite nicely together. I'm quite pleased with that. I mean of course I would love to have seen a real gothic grungy palette to match the packaging and the aesthetic. And also because a lot of these colours, they're going to look, I mean this one that I'm using now for example, it's going to look hella ashy on anyone with more melanin than me. I mean if my friend Tamara or um, Annette tried to use this, they would struggle. I mean, Tamara isn't as deep as Annette, but even she, I think, would struggle with that one. Get back into Vivid Mood again, just to strengthen the shade down there. But can you see what I mean about how easily they, they blended together? That was pretty impressive for purples, I've got to say. Right, cleaning the brush off and picking up the smaller blender brush and I am going to go into let's go into Blood Queen it's really surprising because normally it's like in Blue Blood I'm sure he's got a shade called Blue Blood and I'm sure he's got a shade called Blood Sugar in Blood Sugar. But there isn't a bloodlust in here. Which surprises me. Anyway, dipped the tip of the bristles in. And then little circular movements. Cross to roughly about the middle. And then kind of tapering out. Just building up this outer edge here. I'm trying to choose the purples that I think will be the most difficult to blend. Because you know me, I always go for the shades that I think are going to be not as good as the rest. Because I want to see I don't want to use the easy shades, I want to see the shades that are going to be a bit more rambunctious, 
I love that word. Rumbunctuous. Anything that's left, I'm just going to windscreen wipe her through. Because I don't really want it to show too much when the eyes open. Yeah, that's perfect. <clears throat> And then again this side, this side is much easier because obviously being blind in this eye I can actually close it so you can see what I'm doing. Because if I close the other eye it would definitely be the blind leading the blind. So have you picked this up or are you not? Are you waiting to see some of the reviews? I must admit, when I first saw the reveal, I was a little bit... <sighs> Underwhelmed, I think, is probably the best word. Because I was expecting something more gothic. But apparently he's releasing another palette. Uh, April, which is great because Hubby can get me that for my wedding anniversary, um, which is going to be more gothy. So that's going to be interesting. Now, like I was saying, with this one, I do still get the barcoding because the little circular movements don't work on this eye because the creasing's too deep. So I'm just going to buff that out, mainly because I don't want it building up in the creases loose which is something that I, I do get and then it cascades down my face during the day as it dries so when I put the shimmer on you will see that I do actually have to stretch the lid out a little bit okay now I'm going to go into dungeon And I'm going to pop that on the outer edge of my mobile lid. And just lightly blend it into Blood Queen. using the same brush just can you see the difference that gives to the outer edge of the eye though it really gives it definition because I'm I'm struggling unfortunately again my hay fever has started early and I've always had watery eyes anyway. Fibro makes that a million times worse. And then you add early onset hay fever and it's just grey, lovely. Um, so I'm finding it very difficult in terms of, I mean I would love to put a huge great wing on with this and really, but I just, I can't. So I'm having to find ways of getting that same impact but using shadows instead I like that I like that a lot folks right <clears throat> grab my flat lip brush now as always you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush but I've got my Jasmine Slay all day to wet the brush once I have gone in. Um, I usually use a cheaper um, spray to wet my brush. But for some reason, and the Jasmine is the only scent that does it, it dries my jawline out. So <clears throat> I tend to keep that for using on the eyes now. Right, so I'm going to go into these new formulas that he says he's got. Let's see how well they'll pick up on a brush. I'm going to start off in Wet Jewel. 
Okay, it doesn't pick up very easily on a brush. Really having to be... Really having to sort of buff the surface up just to get anything on there. But I've got some. Because obviously, although at the moment I could use my finger because I'm nail less. So annoying because it's actually my real nails, like you can see, just with acrylic on. So I've got to have a tip on that one now till it grows out. Right, so I've packed as much pigment on this brush as I can. Just going to give it a quick spray with the slay all day. And then time to apply. Right, I'm going to look down into a little mirror here so that you can still see what's going on. The reason I like this lip brush is you can get right into the inner corner. Now, with this being a new formula, I don't know what the opacity is going to be like. Yeah, it's not as opaque as previous shimmers of his. but very, very reflective. Okay. Let's go back into Wet Jewel again and do the other eye. And the thing is with this, this is really scuffing the um, pan up. I'll show you in just a minute. really scuffing the pan up trying to get some onto a brush but not everybody wants to use their fingers to apply things now as I said with this side I do have to stretch the lid out especially with the shimmers because otherwise instead of being nicely blended out like this is it builds up in the crease and as it dries through the day I get cascades of it coming down my face which is not good but you can see I only pull it out as far as I have to I don't pull it out to my ear roll and as soon as I can let go I do right clean the brush off I'm going into Pink Magic, which is the the other new the new formula that he's got. Wet Jewel and Pink Magic are the two new ones, which is why I'm using them both today. Yeah, again, this is really scuffing the pan up, being able to pick it up on the brush. But you can pick it up on a brush. I've seen so many people just give up and go result to using their finger which is not helpful if you're like me and you've got ridiculously long nails or you're a klutz I'm just going to apply this to the middle part of that lid And then just lightly drag where the two meet using the tip of the bristles and again just buff the outer edge where it meets that deeper shade dry the brush off and go back into pink magic to up on the brush again and you can see for the second half of the eye I don't pull the lid out at all because I don't need to but the lid does move a lot lot more than this one does, so I do tend to get more fallout this side. Just because of the additional movement. Okay, I got to 
to admit, I am actually quite liking that so far. Right, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to chuck some foundation and whatnot on. And then I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Before I go, I will just show you those two pans so that you can see what I mean about how it's really scuffed up the pan trying to get it onto the brush. Unfortunately, it's a necessary evil if you're going to use a brush. So, um, for you, my darlings, there is no delay. I will see you instantly. Hey, I'm back. Um, I've had a couple of questions because recently I've been doing soap brows and people have been asking me how do I do them. Um, I picked up this Revolution soap brow kit, which is basically a bit of soap and a brush. And you can either use the soap wet or dry. I prefer to use it dry. And you just rub the brush in the soap. Like that. And then just brush upwards. And it's great if you've still got brows that are recovering from the 90s like me that you over plucked because this is just a really good way of fluffing your brows up and getting the current fluffy brow look I do have one brow that fluffs more than the other bizarrely um, you don't have to use the revolution kit. I got this just for ease of chucking it in um, overnight back because I very often at weekends we spend the one of the nights up at mother-in-law's um, so I take like a, a basic makeup kit with me for the morning um, but you could do this just with an ordinary bar of soap and a clean spoolie. I do that and then you can go over it with whatever. And I figured that today I'm going to use one of the colours from the palette. Because why not? And I know now when my husband listens back to this, he's going to go, oh, you sounded very Welsh when you said palette. Yes. So I'm going to dip into a dungeon, which is the deep shade that I used here. With angled brush. Starting in the middle of the brow so that it's not too dark at the front and then just little upward streaks <sighs> sorry my eyes starting to water already Don't do my waterline. I mean, this execution in your brows looks almost black, which is great. But then, if you get out in the daylight, as the light hits it, you're going to get just that flash of purple. So, if you're wanting to try coloured brows but are not as wafty as me to put a big purple pomade on the top which ends up staining your skin underneath and you have pink brows for four days. Um, this is always a good option. It's also great because then you don't have to pay 
I mean, I, I had an issue with a green look that I did that I couldn't get the right shade green pomade. I tried mixing what I'd got here and just couldn't get it, so I ended up using one of the eyeshadow powders instead. And you can see that just, that works so well. It's crazy how well that works. Right, I'm going to grab my flat top brush, dip back into Executioner, no, Dungeon even, why did I say Executioner, that's the, that's the glittery one, dip back into Dungeon, just run that about halfway along the lower lash line. Yes, I always flinch that side because I have no peripheral vision. And then I'm going to dip into... Let's clean the brush off first, Ange. Then I'm going to dip into Blood Queen. To finish that bit off. On the under eye. And then... Oh, see what I mean about my eye is watering already. It's just crazy. And then this is my favourite brush. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. And I'm going to dip into Vile Serpent, which is the teal. I know, it doesn't sound like it's going to work, and it might not. I'm going to give it a go anyway. So I'm going to use the teal to gently buff the lower lash line. Okay, I like that. Well, my eye starting to run that side is making it smudge quite a bit further than I would like it to. As you can see. The joys, huh? The joys. Right. I am going to pause you and try and give my eye a bit of time to stop watering. Um, and then I shall come back and I shall do mascara, lipstick, highlight. I might choose one of the new shades out of here to use as a highlight. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I will be back with my finished look. Please don't go anywhere. I am back. <clears throat> I decided against using one of the shades um, <clears throat> from here because with my eye streaming as it is, I didn't want to risk getting loose pigment into my eyes because I didn't know how it would work when I'm buffing it onto my cheek. So I went in with my Kaleidos Star Surfer which when applied wet over setting spray that's the cha 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 that I've been looking for. Um, because my eyes were streaming today, I did my Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof Mascara. This is an absolute dupe for Benefit Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. If you can get your hands on this, I absolutely recommend it. The lippy is because my lipsticks have only just been dispatched from America, as I said is another one of the Charlotte Tilbury ones that my friend Hedda sent me and this is Kiss Chase so this is my finished look with 
bloodlust. So, what do I think of it? Uh, the shades that I used, I was impressed with. They blended out really nicely. I've actually got a deeper look than I was expecting to be able to get. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said, the first time I saw this, I was slightly underwhelmed by um, the colour story. But then I, I don't know if you've seen my Instagram, and actually my friend Tara Kruger used a picture of this on his film, so thank you for that my darling. Um, I basically reworked this into the same kind of layout as Blood Sugar and Blue Blood and made the background white. If I remember I'll stick it up on screen somewhere for you. Um, and then I realised, actually, yes, I did like this layout. But it wasn't until I'd done that that I could be sure. Um, I really couldn't decide. Because this is such a deep purple, it makes so many of these up here look so washed out. But then when you see them with a white background, you get to see more of the actual colour that they are. Um, so yeah, I mean I've used what, one, two, three, four, five, five of the mats and two of the new formula. And so far, I like what I've used. The new formula, as expected, was difficult to pick up on a brush, but it was doable. Um, And the purples that I used so far blended out really well, better than his previous purples have done. So, on a first impression, having tried it, would I still buy it at the moment? Yes. Um, obviously, I'm going to do more looks with this over the next few days, both filmed and not filmed. Um, if there are any specific colours from this palette that you want to see me use, let me know in the comments box and I'll do my absolute best to use them in a look for you so you can see how they apply, how they blend, etc. But, that is my first impression of the current iteration of Jeffree Star palettes. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed because every time I put a film up, I lose at least two to three subscribers, which is extremely frustrating. Thanks, YouTube. Um, so yeah, double check you're still subscribed, please. Leave me a comment below as to which colours you want to see me use next with the palette. Uh, let me know if you've got the palette, what do you think of it. Um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but if you're going to be a really big boys and give me a thumbs down, tell me what you didn't like about it. Do you just not like Jeffree Star? Do you not like me? Is it my voice? Do you not like the look that I did? Are you frustrated that my eyes started watering? Whatever. just tell me why you gave me a thumbs down because otherwise how am I going to learn and improve constructive comments only thank you uh, if you are new here hi hello welcome uh, sometimes it's madder than this sometimes it's a little more sane than this but this is pretty much the personality that you're gonna get with my films uh, if you've enjoyed it and if you've made it this far through there must be something you liked then it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button, turning it from red to grey. Ring my bell, ring my bell. And then say yes I want notifications. Y y yes I want all notifications. 
yes I really want all notifications and then YouTube might send you one in four notifications of my films going up. Happy days. Talking of my films, I do have an awful lot more that you can look through if you wanted to see some more looks that I have done or just find out a little bit more about me. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.